Over the course of their 40-year career, the Canadian trio Rush became one of Hard Rock's most highly regarded bands. Today we will look back at Rush and the expansion of their talent. Rush first formed in Toronto, Ontario in the autumn of 1968, starting with guitarist Alex Lifeson, vocalist Geddy Lee, and drummer John Rudson. Why try? Rush later released their first album entitled Rush in 1974 and it ended up becoming the biggest selling debut that any Canadian band had ever released. The band spent years building a core audience touring as many as 200 dates a year throughout North America. We must have done something different than right because there just, there just aren't any bands that last that long. Very, very few anyways. After their debut album, Rutsy was replaced by drummer Neil Peart, who also became the band's primary songwriter. Peart, who was influenced by works of science fiction and fantasy, composed the lyrics based on his influences that became the label and hallmark of the group's rising career. There's no swimming in the heavy water, no singing in the acid rain. Red alert, red alert. Rush returned in 1975 with two more albums, Fly By Night and Caress of Steel, but it wasn't until their 1976 album, 2112, that proved their breakthrough release. What's been important to this band has been the music, and the way we present our music, and the way we, uh, we make our music. 2112 was the first in a long time of gold and platinum releases, when it was dismissed as overblown and too much with Lee's high vocals, Pert's compositions, and Lifeson's guitar work into a formula unified as a whole. In 1977, A Pharaoh to Kins was released and reached the top 40 in both US and Britain. It only got better from there when 1981's Moving Picture was released with the hit song Tom Sawyer, which gained a heavy exposure in their best known song. A Monday warrior mean, mean stride today. As the 1980s continued, Rush popularity flew through the roof with albums like 1982's Signals, 1984's Grace Under Pressure, and 1985's Power Windows, which continued to sell thousands to millions of copies. Moving Pictures is one of our biggest records. We sold a lot of three million or something. And that's a lot of records to sell. In October of 1992, Rush was honored with the Harold Moon Award by the Society of Composers, which is the most prestigious songwriters award in Canada. A year later, October of 93, Rush was chosen as a recipient of the Toronto Arts Award, where the group was recognized for their body of work through their excellence and their art and culture of their hometown, Toronto. When it comes to our music, we're very, very demanding on each other as well as our sounds. It wasn't until the summer of 1996 when the band hit the road. Shortly thereafter, Neil Peart lost his daughter in an automobile accident, only to find out two years later with his wife succumbed to cancer. The dire times Rush had encountered did not cause the band to quit. January of 2000, Rush topped a music online poll which determined them best Canadian musicians of all time. The same year, Lee took time out for her solo career with 2000's My Favorite Headache, but rumors spread when the band was in the studio recording for an upcoming album. But it wouldn't be till 2002 by news that Rush was recording new songs in Toronto. They released their 17th studio album, Vapor Trails, and toured to embark on their 30th anniversary tour only to return to the studio and work on 2007's May album, Snakes and Arrows, followed by Snake and Arrows Live in early of 2008. 
In a true 1969 fashion, Alex Lifeson and Geddy Lee names their act The Rush to fit into the rock genre by The Who, The Beatles, and The Rolling Stones. With their unique sound and creative voice, Rush had become a huge hit and notched with a 23 consecutive gold and platinum record. Thank you.